Hello everyone. It has been so stinking long since I uploaded to my YouTube channel. Please forgive me. Uh, life has literally been insane, but I am back and I thought what better way to dip my toe back into the YouTube pool than to film a updated makeup collection. I'm going to start with complexion products and also I just want to say before we get into it, I, like some of the stuff is different obviously otherwise I wouldn't feel the need to do an updated collection There are things in here like there are things from my last video that I've decluttered There are things that I've added since then and I'm not 100% on everything in my collection because I've made some new additions So I'm going to talk to you about each of the things as we go through So I'll start with complexion and these containers I got from Ikea They're like literally 50 cents or something and they're so good So I highly recommend these if you need a storage solution Okay, so these are my primers. So this is the MAC Strobe Cream in Gold Light. I swatched this in my last video, but it's really just a beautiful, like, shimmery, goldy lotion. And I've been using this a lot more recently, just because I'm honestly so sick of this primer, because it literally will not die. But I'll show you what this looks like. It's just a really gorgeous, hydrating primer, and it has, like, a gold sheen to it. You can see right there. It's gorgeous, and it looks so good on my skin tone. I used to have the smaller tube of Pink Light, but I honestly feel like this one uh, just suits my skin tone much more because, as you guys know, I'm an olive girl and I struggle with undertones sometimes. But this is a really great depth and, like, undertone for me. This is the Lancome La Base Pro. This feels so luxurious. Like, just listen. It's literally in the thickest frosted glass bottle, so it's so beautiful. And this is a blurring primer. And oh my goodness, when I tell you that this blurs the crap out of your pores, it is crazy. I genuinely feel like this is like something like putting a filter on your face like the way ooh, I actually forgot to include this which is a new addition I got this as a recommendation from Marlene Estelle um, the owner and CEO of Makeup Geek um, she just recently like had a resurgence on YouTube and she was talking about this in one of her videos and I was like she's making it sound so good I, I need to try it so I did and I don't regret it at all and I actually got this half off because it was a part of one of Ulta's sales so I snatched up when I could um, and it's just the epitome of luxury. I mean everything from the bottle to the formula. Okay, another new addition I've got the Hollywood flawless filter. This was a gift and I am so freaking in love with this It is first of all shade 4 which is like the best olive tone that they have and I just love this primer so much I'll swatch it here. You can see what a gorgeous olive shade. This is it's like not too orange which is always my issue with these types of products and I'll blend it in here too. And what I love about this is that it is skin tone. So it like kind of adds like a teensy tiny bit of coverage and it really just kind of smooths over everything in a way that is so flattering. And I just absolutely love this and I cannot wait to keep using it. Next up I have this marshmallow primer from NYX. Obviously I have had this for so long. I don't even know how much is left in here or how long I've even had this. Um, and it's not that this is a bad primer, it's actually like pretty good. I'm just honestly kind of sick of it and like I need to switch it up. So I just, I'm gonna keep using it because I wanna finish it, but it's like not what I am gravitating to as of now. I got this sample from Sephora and I really, really love this. This is the Say, oh, it's the Glowy Super Gel, but it's in the shade Sun Glow. So I really, really love this. It is so lightweight, really refreshing scent. It's a beautiful bronzy color, and I feel like this is good for, like it honestly is a pretty dark bronze, so it's good for like darkening up a foundation that might be too light for you. And it has like a really nice bronzy cast to it. It's super lightweight though. Definitely purchase the full size of this, but I do want to finish up this sample first. Similarly, I have this Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin, and I have really used this up. This is gorgeous. This is more like a serum in my opinion. Is it marketed that way? Yeah, a glow serum. So it is really runny and the best way I can describe this is honestly just juicy. It makes your skin so plump and juicy and this smells like cucumbers. It's a very artificial cucumber smell, but okay, now let's move into base products. And so that's going to be like foundation and concealer and powder. Um, what's in here is just a Fit Glow Beauty sample. I still haven't used this. I need to finish it. It's for their primer, so I'll use that someday. But um, these are my face products as of now. Obviously, my tried and true Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This is like the most stable thing in my life at this point. This is the shade Fawn, and it is the most perfect shade match for me. It literally feels like I'm putting my skin tone on my face and just making it completely even. 
Um, it's absolutely incredible and I don't think I'll ever be able to go without this. This is my second bottle, as you guys know if you have been watching me for a minute. But it is just such a perfect olive shade for me. Um, I'll swatch it here. It's just perfection. Literally perfection. It's olive enough and it still has that golden tone to where it doesn't look like gray on me because although I am olive, I'm a saturated warm olive. So I need something that has that warmth in it with enough green and it is such a hard balance to strike you guys like I literally go crazy looking for products that have just this like shade because it's an impeccable shade match and something I recently got that I have absolutely been loving is this Tower 28 Sunny Days um, Tinted Moisturizer with SPF this is SPF 30 I believe and I have the shade PCH. This is a pretty darn close match to this foundation. It's just like a teeny bit lighter, which is honestly not a problem because, well, actually, you know, it might not even be lighter. It might just be a little more orangey, um, but it's still like good enough to the point that it blends out seamlessly into my skin. So like I, I just wore this this morning and it literally looked flawless. I put this on with a beauty blender because I, even though it's like a sunscreen like it is so like highly pigmented that you kind of need to use a brush or a beauty blender like if I put it on with my hands it can kind of tend to look streaky so I use a beauty blender with it it looks absolutely stunning it makes your skin look so healthy and the fact that there's SPF 30 in here is great um, obviously you can use your own sunscreen under this I wouldn't necessarily rely on this for sun protection but it is a great additive to your routine I finished up my Bobbi Brown concealer that was in a pot so I went ahead and got the stick version because I saw Marlene Estelle use it and it looks so nice and easy to blend and just a little less messy honestly and listen how juicy was that but this is the corrector it is again the same shade value just the undertone is extremely peachy this is exactly what I need to cancel out my dark circles I absolutely love this I'm so happy that it comes in a stick and I actually think this is a much better deal like price per ounce than the one in the pot and lastly is this fit fit glow beauty concealer in the shade C 3.7 this they tout as their olive shade, but I honestly don't think it's that olivey. Um, I mean, it's pretty olivey, but it's just like, I don't know. It just feels a little, something about it is off to me. And this isn't like my preferred method of concealer because it's so thick. Um, it doesn't really take well to powder almost. Like I can't bake this. I have to lightly powder it. And I honestly don't like just like setting my concealer with powder. I like baking. So it's just not my favorite formula. I definitely prefer something a little more liquidy like the beloved and dearly departed Cover FX Concealer. I am telling you guys, I have searched high and low. High and low. Nothing compares to the Cover FX Concealer and I literally had to throw mine away because it was so expired. It was like burning my under eyes when I was using it. And that was my second tube that I had gone through and I was like scraping the edges and I was like literally dreading the day where I would have to find a new concealer. And you guys, I'm so sad to report that like, my concealer game is so weak right now. Like I just haven't even been wearing concealer. Like I have been doing fully full beads with no concealer because I am desperate and struggling for a concealer. I'm really trying to make this work because I mean, I bought it, it was expensive. Um, even though I did, I think I got this 20% off, but it was still expensive because Fit Glow is not cheap, but this is a really good brand. It's like a clean skincare infused brand. Um, and State of Kate, this is like her favorite concealer and I love watching State of Kate and I love her recommendations. I, I've literally tried so many replacements. Like I, I tried the Tower 28 concealer. I tried the Dior Forever Skin Correct concealer. I tried um, the Kosas concealer. Like I need something with an olivey shade that is like similar to this, or maybe even a little more golden, like yellow, um, and like one shade lighter. And I swear it is so difficult to find. Like you guys, I'm literally struggling so bad. But anyways, this is the last face product, and I'm actually almost out of this. As you can see, it's literally on its last legs. And I'm honestly thinking of trying a different powder after this. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, and although this is, you know, yield faithful, I feel like there are so many powders that I want to try. Like, I want to try the Givenchy Prisma Libre Powder, the Loose Powder. I want to try the One Size Blurring Loose Powder. I want to try the Huda Beauty um, Easy Bake Powder, the Loose One. Like, those are my three powders that I've really been wanting to try. And they all come in minis, and I, I like buying mini powders because I literally cannot finish like a huge powder. Like, it's, it's just not realistic. I mean, even though I have, I like a mini more because I feel like it stays fresher longer and it's easier to travel with as well. Okay, let's get into an extremely fun part, blush, bronzer, and highlight. Let's start with blush.
Okay, so this is my current blush collection, and I feel like this hasn't changed too much since I last spoke to you guys, but um, we'll start with the Fenty double-sided cream blush. This was unfortunately limited edition, so you cannot get this anymore, but I absolutely love, love, love these colors and this formula. And the shades are not too different from each other to where you can't like mix them up and layer them, but they're just so beautiful and perfect, especially for spring and summer. Like that is when I really bust out this compact. And although it's a cream, it has not like gone off in the slightest. So honestly, props to Fenty for using preservatives because we all need them in our products. Next, I got this rose ink blush. This was actually a gift with purchase from Sephora. And I was shocked because it's literally a full size blush. I've never tried rose ink's formula before, but I was really curious. And mine is a little bit brown because I've been like mixing it with my bronzer. Um, but this formula is beautiful. It is super substantial. It's like a really... It's almost like a stiffer formula, but it's so like easy to work with in a way because, but I absolutely love this. I've actually, like this is the only shade I've been reaching for like the past couple of weeks when I've been doing my makeup just because I kind of like found it again. Like, you know, when you like have stuff in your collection but you don't really use it and you just like use it randomly one day and you're like, oh crap, like this is actually kind of amazing. I'm not sure if Wisteria is a part of the permanent line or if it was just for, for that gift with purchase, but if you can get your hands on this, I highly recommend it. And then this half magic blush, I literally hate the packaging. I wish they had an actual compact, but this blush shade is gorgeous. It's called Magic Brownie. And I even use this on my lips as like a lip product because um, it gets such a beautiful like blurred lip look. It has just enough red and brown in it and it's so beautifully balanced. I just cannot get enough of this. And you can see how blurred it looks on my hand. Like that's exactly how it makes your skin look. It's, this is the REM Cream Blush. Um, mine is used and abused because I absolutely love this shade but i haven't been using it as much as i normally do just because i want to like kind of rotate my collection but this is actually my favorite formula of cream blush um it's just flawless like i would not change anything about this cream blush it is so freaking good and i think these are like rem beauty's highly like most highly rated products um and i i do think this is the best thing from her makeup line and i just love this shade too specifically it's like a darker version of um the Pillow Talk Matte Blush Wand. Like if they had a Pillow Talk Medium for that blush wand by Charlotte Tilbury, it would be this. I actually swatched it on my community tab. So if you wanna see the difference between those, um, I will link it below, but it's also in my community tab. Okay, then we've got Glossier Storm, another absolutely whoa, gorgeous shade. And yeah, this is kind of a, this is really not a user-friendly formula in my opinion. That doesn't stop me from using it because I feel like I have kind of mastered it, but it is so, so beautiful. Just this shade is like, insanely gorgeous like do you see this right now it is so and it honestly reminds me a lot of this um half magic blush except there's more red in this like there's more like pink red tones but this is just more brown and then i bought this charlotte tilbury blush um this is the shade pinkasm another love of mine this is actually coming up on expiry i've had this for about a year but um and you know these types of applicators do house a lot of bacteria so i'm kind of getting worried about that but I just can't let it go like oh my god are you seeing that it's like so metallic but in the best way and it doesn't like stay looking metallic on your cheeks and honestly when I first started using this I didn't really like it because it was so like pigmented and metallic but I literally just started using less and I immediately liked it like I was putting like three dots per cheek and it was just way too much so I switched it up to one dot per cheek and it is flawless and this again is actually a really blurring formula i feel like everything from charlotte tilbury is so blurring on your skin and it really makes that area that you put it on top of look poreless this is a new addition this is the wet n wild naked brown blush i got this because emily noel was talking about it and raving about this color in particular and i see why it's a very soft like i hate using this word but it, it is a buttery formula um, it's almost like a really boring blush that kind of looks like nothing in the pan But once you put it on your cheeks, it really transforms and I feel like depending on your skin tone This will look different on you because um, it honestly looks way different on Emily Noel than it does on me Like on her it's like a really pigmented like warm toasty blush But obviously I'm a little darker than her and it just looks like such a natural beautiful like skin tone type of blush Like it's not too extreme. It's nothing like you know it's like a fail safe like if you don't know what to use and you use this you'll be fine and that it honestly kind of reminds me of um toasted cinnamon by burt's bees is this yeah so this is toasted cinnamon um they are different shades so this is much more orange um you can see that naked brown is a little bit more red um but this is like a purely like light nude blush on me i absolutely love it i actually used this today i had to do my makeup so i used this one um and i layered it on top of wisteria and it looked really good so absolutely love that 
And then the most perfection shade for olive skin. Essence Befitting Blush. It's literally a few bucks and it's just gorgeous. And I, I'm gonna try to build this up so you can see it, but it's not like insanely pigmented, like in a good way though. Um, it's just that beautiful nude pink blush. Like, Okay, so next we'll talk about bronzers and these two were in my old video. This is a new addition. So this is the Fenty Matchsticks in the shade Truffle. I really, really love this. It is so insanely pigmented. And the formula is a little bit stiffer, so you do kind of have to warm it up before you put it on your cheeks. Otherwise, it's really not going to blend. Um, so what I like to do is put it on the back of my hand first and then use it from there. But I love the reddish quality that this has. It is absolutely gorgeous, and I feel like this perf this color is perfect for my skin tone. And this formula is so, so good. It's like a solid formula. Then I've got this Tower 28 bronzer in the shade Getty. This is their um, Sculptino. They claim it's a contour, but it's literally not. And it's kind of hard to open, but this is what it looks like. I have been using this every time I've been doing my makeup and I just stick my brush in there. So it's like kind of messy, not going to lie, but it is a beautiful shade. It's just warm enough, but it's like still like, I don't know. It's like kind of cool tone, but like warm enough. Like it's not gray, you know, like it, it looks natural when you put it on. Like as you can see, it's much lighter than truffle. Um, this is an oldie, but a goodie NARS original Laguna bronzer. I did end up hitting pan on mine. Um, and I use this still pretty much every time I do my makeup to either set this bronzer or, you know, set up my crease. So I'll just put this next to it. And this is actually even a little bit lighter than Getty, which I'm surprised at. Um, I thought they'd be pretty even, but okay, these are my highlighters. This, these are the Essence Pure Nude um, Sun Lighters and Highlighters. This is Be My Sunlight, this is Be My Highlight. So Be My Sunlight is closer to my knuckles and then Be My Highlight is closer to my wrist. Um, these are a beautiful formula. I mix both of these together as my highlight because I feel like this can look a little icy on me. And then um, this kind of gives it that warmth that it needs. How beautiful does that look? Oh my goodness. So I mix these two together as my powder highlight and it is so, it's that truly lit from within look. It's truly natural looking. And then this was an Alexa Chan recommendation. I literally am obsessed with her makeup style. And honestly, her YouTube channel, like it's just so peaceful and relaxing to watch her videos. But um, she loves this Refi gloss highlight and i honestly love it too it has this gorgeous champagne color but it really shears out to like nothing when you like blend it out and you know it's on your face so i feel like any skin tone could get away with this because it just kind of turns into this beautiful gloss like are you seeing that so i absolutely love this and honestly i wish i could use it more but i feel like when i use cream products like it already leaves such a dewy finish that i don't necessarily need to add this but i just do anyways sometimes because i just love it that much I just realized that in my complexion products, I totally forgot to talk about my setting spray. This is my Holy Grail setting spray. I have been through countless bottles of this. I believe this is the best setting spray on the market. Um, make it last actually makes it last. And I cannot imagine using another setting spray. And now for the most exciting part, lip products. Are you guys ready for this? I don't know if you're ready. It's going to be so fun. Okay. So let's just start with the obvious um, bias here. I'm addicted to these, fully addicted. Um, these are the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms. Oh. It is cushiony, it sticks around on the lips, it lasts a while, and the smell is so good. Everyone has like a slight vanilla scent, and the colors are so like nuanced and perfect. And the price point is amazing. This is Susan Yara's brand Naturium, and I actually, this was like my gateway into Naturium. I started off with these, then I got all of these at the same time. And you can get these on Amazon. I don't I don't know if you can get these four on Amazon, but I know you can get these color, this color family on Amazon. They're not too pigmented, but they're not like so sheer that it doesn't even show up on your lips. Like those are honestly like my pet peeve products, like, like lip products that are so sheer that you might as well just be wearing a clear gloss. I literally cannot stand that. I feel like that is an absolute waste of money. If I'm gonna buy a lip product, I want it to at least show up halfway. Like I like a half pigmented product like for at least lips and these are that. They're so glossy, they're nourishing, they actually like hydrate your lips and they have like good for you ingredients and the colors are just flawless. So I'll stop rambling and actually swatch them. But So this is the shade Lychee. So this is their red, then the shade Jam, which is my most used. I'm trying to make these swatches small so I can fit everything on my hands, but that's Berry. 
and then this is Petal. I love this one for like a milky pink. This is the perfect milky pink. Like if you guys remember um, NARS Turkish Delight, this is giving that, but like 10 times better because that really never worked on my skin tone, but I always wanted it to. So that is Petal. And these, this is the Cafe Collection. So this is Latte. I have all four of them because I just am obsessed with this formula. This is very much a lip liner plus gloss for me. I can't just wear this alone, but I literally love it. Then we've got Chai. This is a cool toned, milky sort of brown. Then we have Spice. And this is Spice. Beautiful, warm, reddish brown. Then this is the shade Mocha, which is the darkest of them. And it's even still not like super dark. Like it is pretty wearable for me. Let's just get the lip liners out of the way. I just really wanted to do those first because they're so fun. So this is 1993 by Urban Decay. Literally a perfect brownie pink for my skin tone. Then we've got Cappuccino, yes, from Rimmel. This is a really nice cool tone brown. If you are too tan for Endless Cacao by Makeup Forever, because that literally looked gray on me, this is like that, but like the it's way deeper and it's like the perfect cool tone brown. Then this is Brownie Pie Brown and it's a, a bit darker too. Then we've got New Truffle. So tragic that they had to ruin a good thing with this lip liner because honestly, like there's not much of this left and I'm kind of freaking out for the day that I don't have this, but it's another perfect neutral mid-tone brown. Then we've got NYX um, Espresso Lip Liner. Love this color too. It's like a really pretty reddish brown and it looks really good with another lip gloss that I'm gonna talk about in a second. Then I've got LA Girls Keep It Spicy. I think this is a MAC dupe, but I'm not exactly sure for what, but I really do like this shade too. These are super creamy. These roll up lip liners. And then I have MAC Cherry. This I specifically just reserved to wear with Ruby Woo and no, it's not spoiled. It's just kind of like waxy, but oops. But yeah, that's Cherry. So I kind of want to go by color family now. So I'm going to swatch all my pink stuff. Um, And then the rest of mine are brown. So let's start with these. So this is Black Cherry from Clinique. This is the Almost Lipstick. Really beautiful shade. This is my second tube of it. I cannot be without this. And dare I say, I actually like the gloss more. Something about it is just like crack. Like it is the perfect reddish brown shade. And if you're olive, please, I'm literally begging you to go buy this. I think you're really gonna like it. And then this is Pat McGrath Bronze Divinity. This is a new addition. It has like this perfect amount of gold and like fuchsia shimmer in it. And the base isn't too dark, so you can really layer this on top of like any lip liner. And I actually wore this, wore this yesterday with 1993, um, which is right there. And it looked so good together. Then we've got NYX, I mean, um, Buxom Dolly. This is another staple in my collection. I've literally been using this since eighth grade. So that should just tell you something right there. This looks really good with NYX Cocoa Liner. Then we've got In Beauty Lip Glaze. This is the shade Berry Jam. This is a State of Kate recommendation. Um, and this literally smells so good. It smells like blue raspberry candy. And usually I'm not a fan of those type of scents. Um, like I feel like Rihanna's lip glosses have that sort of candy smell, but I actually don't like the scent of these. This scent is addicting. Like it kind of makes you just want to eat it. And it also tastes sweet because they're sweetened with stevia. Then this is the um, Lavender Savage lip gloss from Fenty. This is on the chopping block. And it's really just because of the smell. Like I just cannot stand it. It's, it's like sweet but spicy in the strangest way. And it is plumping too. So like it's not terrible, but I just honestly am not like a huge fan. Like I literally only bought this for the color and it's like not even that pigmented. Like it just looks like any other like pinky lip gloss. So that was kind of disappointing. But this is the, rem the only remaining Fenty gloss that I have. The other ones were so expired, so I had to throw them away. But this one is just okay. It's on the chopping block, but I'm not getting rid of it because it's not expired, and I really just want to like get some use out of it. This is also on the chopping block because I feel like this is expired. I've literally had this for so many years, but like I'm just I don't know, I'm just holding on to it. But it's this Dior lip glow in the shade Rosewood. This is an okay color for me. I like it better with a lip liner. This Fenty gloss, I love so much I can overlook the scent. This is like half gone as you can see it's also a sample but this is the shade hot cherry this gloss is flawless this is the best like like 
lightly red tinted shade. Like there are so many like red glosses. Um, this is the best one in my opinion. Then we have got Dior Mahogany Lip Oil. I love this. I can't remember if I had this last time. And this so much I didn't really buy for the color, but I bought for the formula, the scent, the experience. It's just a really beautiful like brownish red shade. If you can tell, I love brownish red shades. Then we've got MAC Cherry. I mean, not Cherry, Ruby Woo. And this is like my go-to red lipstick. Just flawless. This is the best red to ever exist. No one can convince me otherwise. Then this is also a new addition. This is NARS Pigail. I'm not sure how to say this. Pigai? Like, I feel like it's a French word. So in that case, it would be pronounced Pigai. This looks also really good underneath that bronze divinity gloss from Pat McGrath. But I literally got this for such a random reason. So I'll tell you guys. There's this TV show called Elite on Netflix. And there's this character in that show called Isadora. And she has the most beautiful brownish pink lipstick on all the time. And I'm like, what is that shade? I went to her Instagram. I looked for a color. I looked for a picture where she was wearing that shade. Then I looked at the tagged people. I found the makeup artist. I went to the makeup artist page and I found a picture of her wearing that same makeup look. But I commented on the makeup artist page and I was like, Hey, would you mind telling me what lipstick this is? I literally love it. And she said it was NARS Pigel. So I literally bought it. And I love it. I don't regret buying it one bit. And then I'll go ahead and do my brown shades. There are not too many because I'm definitely more of a berry red type of girl. But I do love a good brown. So I have the Sephora collection. I think it's called Be Proud. It's just a really nice nude color. And this is a gorgeous like half tinted product as I was talking about earlier. So it's right here. And I love this shade. Um, these are also like $5 right now, so I'm not sure why they're on sale. Hopefully they don't discontinue them, but it is gorge. Then we have got YSL Candy Glaze in the shade 14, Scenic Brown. This I absolutely love. It is just a really pretty cool toned brown, but it's like literally beautiful. It's one of those like click up type of things, so it's like kind of hard to swatch, but it's beautiful. And then we've got NYX brown or this is the nyx cinnamon roll lip gloss and i have a feeling this is going to be similar to one of my naturium glosses but we'll just watch this here oh it's actually not this is pretty pigmented for a lip gloss but i love the butter gloss formula there then um this is also a new addition maybelline raw chocolate matte lipstick i got this because of hannah louise poston and i actually don't think that maybelline really makes this anymore so i got this off of amazon and it was a little sus because it looked like someone touched all over it there was like glitter all over the package but the actual bullet was like unaffected so i just cleaned it up with some alcohol but this is what that looks like and then this is on the chopping block unfortunately this is the amico lay lip treatment oil in the shade excellence which is a beautiful brown i'm not even ugh, should i swatch it i, I want to because it's just so gorgeous but I don't know if you guys can tell, just look at how messy this gets. And it literally leaks. Like, I cannot lay this down on its side or it will leak. Oh, just look how juicy that is. Like, it is the most glassy, glossy, juicy gloss I own. And it is the only thing, like, keeping me onto this gloss. Like, even though I don't like the fact that it leaks, I literally want to buy other colors because the formula is impeccable. But... Oh my god, I can't stand the packaging. Like, why does it leak so bad? Like, if, it, if I lay it on the side, it will literally come all over the tube and I have to clean it up with an alcohol wipe and it gets sticky and it's everywhere. And I just do not want to ruin one of my purses or my pockets with this. So I just keep it upright in my cabinet like that. And I can only use this, like, at home or, like, put it on before I leave. Like, I cannot take this with me. So that is really frustrating. And then lastly, we have a relic. This is 10 years old at this point. This is Lord's collab with MAC um, called Pure Heroin. It is a really cool dark purple. And I obviously don't wear this anymore, but I just keep it for collector's sake. But that is like so not what I would wear, but I just can't get rid of this because Lord was like, Lord was my first concert. It was honestly a life-changing experience. Like, <laughs> I can't even describe it, but that's why I can't get rid of this lipstick because it reminds me of Lord. It was literally her collab with MAC and it's just like too iconic to get rid of. So I'm keeping it. Okay, so I'm going to speed through like utilitarian products and then we can get into the fun eyeshadow. So this is my love of life uh, mascara. This is the Essence Lash Princess and specifically the one in the green tube. 
is absolutely amazing. I can't even count how many I've been through of these. I think this is the only mascara I've been regularly purchasing since the beginning of 2021, maybe even a little bit into 2020. So yeah, absolutely love it. And then this is the Milani black mascara. I mean, black eyeliner pencil. Um, this is just a shade after dark. And it's just a really nice solid black liner, super creamy, very good for smudging out. Then I have Sephora Collection Tiramisu Brown Liner. This was a khaki recommendation. I love how dark it is, but it's like clearly brown. So that is like a really good option if you feel like black liner is harsh. Um, then I have this gel liner from Maybelline. It's kind of on its last legs, but this is the brown shade. Um, and it's a very cool toned ashy brown. So it's kind of like a love hate, but I'm keeping it for now because it's still good. Then I have this little sample of the Kosas Brow Gel. And I have my actual brow gel at the moment, which is NYX Control Freak, but this is getting really disgusting. So I, like it's literally not even clear anymore. And it honestly kind of smells like glue. I'm not sure if that's normal. So I'm gonna keep using it for now, but I did order a new brow gel. I, I actually just got the Benefit Give Me Brow because it was on sale. It was half off for Sephora's, I mean for Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty this year, or this season, because they do it semi-annually. And then I just have my little Urban Decay Grindhouse Sharpener, which I think is also 10 years old at this point, so. Okay, let's start with small little single shadows. So stuff like this. Um, this is on the chopping block. This is the About Face Eye Paint in the shade Fractal. I love the color. I hate the packaging. I know they changed the packaging, but I'm not gonna buy it just in new packaging to have it for that sake. And something about this like irritates my eyes a little bit. Like it kind of burns when I put it on. Like not in a bad way, I guess. It almost feels cooling, but like it's just a little uncomfortable. So I'm like, I just don't know if I want to use this, but it is really beautiful. And I did use it today to kind of like regather my thoughts on this. Um, but I just literally don't know how to feel. Like, I want to love it. I really do, because the color is beautiful. The formula is great. It's just like, it kind of has a weird cooling sensation. And I just hate the packaging. Like what, what is this? We have got these ColourPop shadows. I wore this yesterday got compliments, so that's how you know it's valid. But this is the ColourPop shade in, uh, Super Shock Shadow in the shade Millionaire. And I love this because it has like a cool taupey base and it has brown and pink shimmer. So it's just a beautiful, really unique combination. Um, so I love that. Then we've got ColourPop A Little Quarky. Uh, I also used to love ColourPop Game Face, which is like a really beautiful copper. Maybe I'll rebuy that. But this is a gorgeous, again, like, brownie, coppery, super sparkly, shiny shade. This almost has like a wet look to it. Like it's almost bordering on that, but it's not quite a wet look. Then we've got the Sephora Single Shadow in the shade Shock Chalk. This is a dupe for Half Magic Sweat Pebble I discovered, um, but I didn't buy it to dupe that. I just figured that out. Um, but this is a gorgeous single shadow. Dare I say, probably actually, I will say my favorite single shadow that I own, cause it is just flawless. Like. Are you seeing this color? Are you seeing this pigmentation? And this goes for days. Like this swatch, I just dipped my finger in once. Like you guys saw that. And I have so much left on my finger. And I love that on the edges, this kind of turns a little warm. Like it, it has like a reddish thing going around at the edges, but the like sparkle is so cool toned. It almost looks like a blue brown shadow, even though it's not. I'm actually just gonna take these out. Okay, so this is a new addition. We've got Lithium by Urban Decay. I spoiled myself with my Ulta points and I got this because I've been wanting it for literally so long. So this is what Lithium looks like. Oh my goodness, just insanely beautiful. Like, I haven't even used it on my eyes yet, but I'm literally dying to because can you even? Because I can't. Then we've got an OG Space Cowboy. I literally remember my mom using this like the year it came out. And I think that was like 2014 or something like that. And like, she was literally on the wave before any of us were. And she always just said that she wanted something with just sparkle, no color that she could just put on. And this is basically that it has like a sheer tan base, but on me and my mom, like it literally comes off like clear basically. Cause it kind of matches our skin tone. Then we've got this J cat beauty Metal shadow in the shade Chrome crusher. And this I got during an Ulta fall haul, I believe, because um, they put mostly drugstore stuff on sale. And it is just such a gorgeous shadow. Something about it is a little finicky though. Like it prevents me from using it regularly because it is kind of like a 
thicker formula so it can look kind of crepey on your eyes if you don't use it carefully so that is the only thing that stops me from using this but i do really love the color um i just need to play with it a little bit more and figure out the best way to use it but like stuff like that kind of makes me not want to use it because it's like okay well i have so many other beautiful things that i don't need to figure out how to use so i'd rather just use that next we have tom ford's single shadow cream and powder duo this is naked bronze they unfortunately don't make this anymore um, like since Tom Ford was bought out by I think Estee Lauder they discontinued this formula which is really quite tragic because um, it is gorge but this is the topper and the brown I honestly like the brown shade alone like I feel like when I add the topper on top of it it totally changes the look then I've got another oh and I actually got these both half off because they were like going out of stock on Sephora's site um, and that's the only way I ever would have bought these because they're like literally so overpriced but this is the shade Platinum. This is a cream shadow. Beautiful, moussey formula. And I just love this cool toned color. Then we've got Moira, Moira Loose and Cream Shadow in the shade Infinity. This is a really gorgeous silvery taupe. Very sparkly. Yeah, it's very silvery. It's definitely more on the silver side as opposed to taupe, which I didn't really know going into buying this, so I don't use it as much as I thought I would, but I still like it. Then I have Laura Mercier Strapless. This is their shadow stick, and I do enjoy this formula a lot. It's a beautiful color too. And actually it's a little similar to Platinum, now that I'm looking at it. They're like pretty similar. Maybe this is a little more purple. Then I have this Sydney Grace uh, Liquid Shadow, and this is in the shade My Bond. I always feel like I have to really mix this up before I use it. This is not a user-friendly formula. Um, if you are like not the best at eyeshadow, I would literally not recommend this. But if you, you know, have the patience and are into this type of shade, I think it's really beautiful. It's like this gorgeous deep reddish purple with like a bluish green sparkle it's actually a stunning shade like i just love this color which is why i have it and why i keep it around but the formula is a little difficult to use not gonna lie then i have my urban decay primer potion and then i have this houdini glitter from half magic wait no from lemonhead la and this is called houdini because now you see it, now you don't, now you see it, now you don't. It is just so cool. This looks really good under low light too. Okay, so we're moving on to smaller palettes now and I believe I have three new additions. No, yeah, three to this little section. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to swatch this because I swatched it in my last makeup collection. And I do kind of want to just save time because I feel like I've been going on for forever. I also swatched this Tom Ford palette. So this is shade Disco Dust. If you want to see that, go watch that. Same with this Dior Quad or Quint. So I'm going to leave that and I'm just going to focus on the palettes that I haven't touched on, which are these three. So these two were gifts and I bought this one. And honestly, I'm not sure if I would have bought these myself if they weren't gifted to me because I just feel like they're so expensive. Like, I mean, they are expensive. Like, this was over, these were over $100 each, but it's the perfect thing to ask for as a gift. So that is how I would recommend going about buying these, honestly. Um, but I am in love with this. Hello. So I'm going to swatch these for you. Like, oh my goodness, are you even seeing that right now? Like, what? I just literally can't. And then this one is called The Benz. Oh my goodness, like it's just so pigmented and flawless. I just love Cleona's formula. This is by Cleona, by the way, I didn't say that. This is the shade Fool's Gold. Literally insane. Like I'm just gonna be freaking out at all these colors, so please bear with me. This is the shade Kelp Forest. This is the Deep Sea Treasures palette, by the way, so everything is kind of like underwater themed. This is Ring of Fire literally insane and then we have cephalopod which is probably the most neutral shade in here but it's still pretty cray cray it's like that purple to green shift this this type of shade always reminds me of that opi nail polish significant other color because it was like so famous in my childhood and then we have the shade shipwreck and this is the shade scuba so yeah insanely gorgeous literally cannot with this palette it was such a good gift like 
if this is still in stock and you want to get someone a gift that's just like, going to blow their mind and they love makeup, this. Then we're going to do the Isamaya palette. This is the Industrial 2.0. Um, I didn't really like the first Industrial at all, but this one was much more my speed. So literally a gorgeous color story, color combination. Beautiful packaging. Like I literally love this for some reason. And I just think this is so beautiful. So I am going to swatch all of them for fun. So that's that shade. Those are the first four. This is also a beautiful inner corner shade, really sparkly. And it does kind of remind me of Saltwater Pearl in a way. I'm running out of space, but we're gonna make it through. This is a really nice topper shade right here. Okay, so these are all the swatches from Industrial 2.0 and Cleona. Now let's talk about this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams. This I had wanted for so long, and um, they were having a really good like bonus points type of thing on on Ulta, where if you spent $100, you got like 500 bonus points. So I literally bought this and her pressed powder, but I hated the powder and ended up returning it. So, But I did keep this because I absolutely love it. So I'll swatch these. And there is a regular Pillow Talk um, palette, but I thought that was too light for me. Like it almost kind of was a little ashy. So I ended up getting Pillow Talk Dreams and I love it. Like these shadows are so pigmented and such good quality and they're so easy to blend and they're so like user friendly. Like it's just giving Charlotte Tilbury like effortless makeup. As far as the um, Mothership 5 palette from Pat McGrath, I have swatched this in my last video. It was part of that collection video. So if you wanna see this, go watch that. Um, but I love this palette. This is the best Mothership palette that Pat McGrath has released. I will stand by that till the end of time. And this is the best inner corner color ever. I literally pull this palette out every time I do my makeup just to use this shade. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but there's a huge dent in that color, as well as this bronze right here. Those are probably my two favorite colors of this palette, but I also heavily rely on these two mattes for like any look that I'm doing. So I just absolutely love this. The formulas are impeccable, and I really think this is the peak of Pat McGrath palettes. And last, but certainly not least, we have my single shadow collection and it's upside down. I have gotten so many more single shadows since I last talked to you guys. I put them kind of in like rainbow order, at least I tried, but I'm kind of running out of space, I'm not gonna lie. I just wish I never depotted these from that little Aether quad, because I would have so much more space. <laughs> but you know, you live and you learn. So these are all my new single shadows. I'm gonna make a separate video about these and I'm gonna do a look with them and I'm gonna swatch all of them in that video. So sorry to not swatch this here because I know if I was watching and someone didn't swatch this palette, I would get kind of annoyed. <laughs> but I really wanna make a separate video about this and I'm gonna make a look with it as well. So you'll see the swatches of everything in here as well as like a look using these shadows. Um, so I've got stuff from Give Me Glow, Lethal, and Cleona and Terra Moons. Lots has happened, um, but I will make a separate video on that. And this palette by itself is from Terra Moons. 
Okay guys, so that is it for this video. I am chilling here with all this gorgeous glitter and swatches on my hand, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it was fun to watch. I love watching videos like this, and I think this is a really good benchmark. Um, so for me, even myself, to compare my collection now to my old collection. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I will talk to you in my next video.